All right, hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dana and I focus on telling you stories about wholesale real estate, deals that I have physically closed, start to finish, uh, got paid out on the end. So if you wanna hear not just about the theory of wholesale, but you wanna hear about actual closed deals, uh, how I closed them, uh, start to finish, found the buyer, all that fun stuff, stay tuned and hopefully this will be a fun video for you. This one has a long timeline it has a lot of drama and a lot of issues and mistakes that I made uh, and uh, maybe got a little bit taken advantage of. You tell me, you tell me. Listen to the story and you tell me down in the comments below uh, at the end uh, what you think of this one. So this one is another PPL. Most of my deals are PPL. Eventually I'll do some on referrals or on market, sub two, that kind of stuff, but I just have a lot more of these to tell. Um, so I'm telling more of these. Anyways, this was a PPL, so I got it from Leeds Zolo. It was a vacant land lead, which was $25. Speaking of uh, vacant land leads with uh, PPL and Leeds Zolo, they have dropped their vacant land leads down to starting $10 prices now which is freaking crazy uh if you want to check out uh lead zolo and ppl the links will be down in the description for uh, my top three favorite ones uh full disclaimer uh lead zolo has a thousand dollar minimum to start with them you can start with a whole lot less with the other ones but i've had more success with lead zolo so take it for what it's worth anyways this came from a vacant land lead from lead zolo and uh, I talked to the lady and she said she had inherited the property from her father. Father had passed away and uh, mother had passed away and she inherited it, but she hadn't gone through the full process of probate yet and wasn't even sure if she could sell it. She just knew she couldn't deal with it because it was hours away. It's in a rural vacant town in California, um, population of 6,670 people. So tiny town, rural town, not the best place to do wholesale, right? Um, but we still made it work. And anyways, so she said, look, it's a mobile home. It's on an acre of land. It has X, Y, Z problems with it, which was basically it's a hoarder house. It was full of stuff. The trailer is in disrepair. Um, it, a lot of stuff that was kind of going on with it where she was like, look, I just can't deal with all that stuff. I'm physically disabled. Um, I don't know what to do here. And I was like, okay, well, how much did you want to get for it? Let's see, maybe there's something that we can do here. And uh, she said, well, tax value was basically $10,000. I think we should get $10,000 for it. And I looked it up and I thought that was fair. I thought that it would probably sell for 30 or 40, kind of as is, um, maybe a lot more if it was fixed up. But the hard part was like, what's the budget going to be to get it there? And so I was like, all right, 10 probably fair. So, but let me, let me do this. I need to do a little bit of research. Let me verify uh, that I have somebody who can work with me in this part of the country because I'm in Arizona, that's in Northern California. I'm not positive that I have somebody who can work with me on this for such a, a niche situation, a mobile home that's a hoarder house, et cetera, et cetera. And she's like, okay, cool, let's figure it out. So I said, man, I don't know, I don't know how to find a buyer for this because I don't want to lock it up and then not have a buyer. I just, I didn't want to deal with that. So I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do reverse wholesaling, which is where you go find a buyer. You ask the buyer, what would you pay for this property? And then you go negotiate that back with the seller. So I went to Zillow and I searched the town and I looked at sold listings. And in the last six months, there wasn't a ton of sales, but there was a few, including a few that were fixers, major fixer properties. And there was one that was a major fixer that had sold about three weeks prior and it had sold for $40,000. And I was like, that's my buyer, right? That's my buyer. So I skip traced the buyer of that property and I called him and it was a Saturday and I called him and he answered and he was like, hey, what's going on? Who is this? I explained the situation of, hey, look, I've got a fixer in the area. I saw you bought that one for 40 grand. If I was able to bring you another one around that same price, would you be interested? And he said, well, yeah, if it's in good enough shape, I'm absolutely interested. And so he said, what's the address? Let me have one of my guys go drive by it because I've got workers in the area. And I said, okay, well, it's vacant right now, but it's locked up. You can't go inside. And he's like, that's fine. I'll just drive by the outside. We'll look in the windows. I'll tell you what I can do. So he called me up and he said, well, it's a little rougher than we would like. It is full of junk, like to the to the ceiling full of stuff. And uh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it because it's a mobile home. It's not a fixed home. That one that I paid forty thousand for was a like a, a brick house, not a mobile home. 
And I know that, right? So I was like, okay, cool. Well, what would you pay for it? If I could get it to you at a specific price, like tell me what you can pay for it. And if I can get it to you for that, then we'll put a deal together. And he said, well, if you could get it to me for 22,000, like that's probably as much as much as I could pay for it. And so I, in my head, I'm like, deal, right? They said they would take $10,000. He's willing to pay $22,000. And I said, if I could get it to you for 22, would you cover all the closing costs? And he said, yeah, of course I'll cover the closing costs. So 22,000 plus closing costs. Yeah, so we're gonna be at like 24, 25, deal, I'm in. And so hung up the phone with him, called back the sellers. And I was like, hey, I've got a deal. Let's put this together. Um, I've got a contractor in the area. He says he likes it and we're in. So I sent them the agreement for $10,000. They signed. I sent him the assignment agreement for $22,000. And he was like, wow, that was fast. Um, Cause I did this all basically kind of like the same day. And he said, that's, that's amazing. Okay, great. Like, let's, let's do this. And then, so uh, this is where the fun started. Um, and I, so I, I was talking to the seller and then we were talking to the buyer and he said, I only want to use my title company, which was maybe mistake number one, because normally you should use your own title company. It's your deal, right? But I hadn't done any in this area. I know he's done them in this area. So I was like, okay, cool. If he's got a investor friendly title company, let's use his title company. So we used his title company. We get it started. Three, four weeks later, they say, hey, it's not in her name. It's still going through the probate process. And we're not sure um, if we can close this unless she physically goes through the probate process. And I was like, got it. Okay, well, let me call the buyer, let me call the seller, and let's see like what kind of delay is this gonna put on. We called, I called the buyer and he's like, look, just tell them I've got a great probate attorney and he will like take care of it. He can get the probate, we can get this closed and it can just get paid out of escrow. And I was like, awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. So you're gonna pay for that? And he said, yeah, I'll pay for it out of escrow. No big deal. And I'm like, awesome. So I called up the sellers and I'm like, hey, so it's gonna be delayed. It's not gonna close right away because we're gonna have to go through the probate process. They're not willing to close it before then. So you have to go through the probate process, however long that takes, but we're gonna probably sign like a three month extension to get that done. Um, but the good news is we're gonna pay for that. So we're not gonna take any money from you out of your 10,000. We're just gonna pay for that and uh, get you taken care of. And they were like, amazing, love it, let's do it. So fast forward months later, all the paperwork goes through, all the stuff goes through, and we're like finally getting towards the end of probate is gonna get wrapped up. We had a date that everything was supposed to happen. And the buyer says, hey, can we get started early? Like, can we go start like cleaning stuff out of the house? And we were like, I'm not sure, let me ask the seller. Seller said, mm, I'm not really comfortable with that, but um, you know, you can get started on the outside. I don't want you to get started on the inside, you get started on the outside. So I get started on the outside and then the seller call, or the buyer calls me and he says, hey, we got a problem, right? Okay, cool, drama problem number two. Uh, he said, hey, somebody broke into the house and they stole the heater and they stole the well pump. And I'm like, they, they stole the well pump? Like just a silly, stupid thing. Like who would steal a well pump? But whatever, so they stole the, the heater and they stole the well pump. And so the buyer was like, hey, I wanna get paid for that. I'm gonna to have to replace those. I wanna get paid for that. And now I'm worried about squatters moving in because it's a problem there, right? And he's like, if it squatters move in because now they've broken in and realized nobody's there because my crews have been here and they've seen activity, He's like, I think we should have somebody move into the house before close and keep an eye on it. But I can't have somebody move into it to keep an eye on it if there's no heater and there's no well pump because there's no water. And it was just one of those fiasco things. He's like, so I'll go pay for it out of pocket now, but I wanna get reimbursed for it. And I was like, okay, well, how much is that gonna cost? And so he basically came up with like, it was gonna cost between 800 and a thousand bucks. And so I was like, all right, whatever, I'll cover it. And he's like, no, you're not covering that. I'm not, I'm not gonna allow you to cover that. That's gotta come from the sellers. It's their, it's their problem. And I'm like, I'm making enough money on this. And I told him, I said, I'm making enough money on this. I'm fine covering it. I don't wanna take any extra money away from them. And he's like, look, if you're gonna take money away from you, I don't wanna even continue the transaction. And it was, it was a weird thing. I get it, like I get his situation, but he's like, go negotiate it with them. 
fine. So I called them, I negotiated, I said, look, I'll cap it at 800 bucks. If it goes above 800 bucks, then I'll pay for it myself. Anything above and beyond that I'll pay for if you guys will agree to pay the 800 and then we will kind of keep a better eye on the property until it physically closes and we can make sure no squatters move in, bigger problems happen, all that fun stuff. So they said, fine, take away the 800 bucks, no big deal. And I was like, all right, golden. They were both on the same page. The buyer got the new well pump and everything. They put it in. They kept the property safe until closing was going to happen. And then everything was supposed to go smooth, right? Well, didn't go smooth. Uh, the probate process was taking forever and forever and forever. And the title company just kept having a problem. And then they finally said, look, okay, we've got the date. We should be getting the official like clear to close on it on this date and we'll move forward from there. And I was like, all right, cool. Told everybody we're golden uh, and everybody was happy. Then they start working up title paperwork because they hadn't done it yet. And they realized that it was a mobile home, not a, not an effects home. And I was like, well, I told you that from the beginning, like that was on the paperwork. They hadn't even worked on it at this point up to that to realize that it was a mobile home. So then they had to figure out who owned the mobile home and then they had to do a separate file for the mobile home and a separate file for the land and because of that they said we will no longer allow an assignment on this property because there's two files and you would have to assign both files and you would have to do two different closings and it's going to add four thousand dollars to it and it was just like oh my goodness like how are we four months this was a six month process by the way how are we four months into this process and you're just now telling me this and I was like, oh my goodness, you're kidding me. I was like, well, what if we do it this way? What if we do it this way? And I ran by them a few different options and they were like, look, we'll do whatever you wanna do, but we're just not doing an assignment. So I called the buyer and I said, look, here's what they wanna do. The, we have agreed that they will do a JV or a referral agreement, but they will not do an assignment. And he said, well, I don't wanna do a JV because I don't want your name on like the contract or whatever if I'm like, we're not really partnering on it, I'm paying you for it. And I was like, okay, well, what if we do this? what if i go contract it in your name so i'll go contract it in your name i'll we'll void my contract with the seller we'll put it in contract with you direct with the seller and then you will pay me a referral fee so i'll, I'll send you a referral fee agreement you'll sign that first that states i get um twelve thousand dollars was basically what the number was and at this point i had to give him all the numbers before then all he knew was the twenty two thousand. and so he was like oh my god you're making twelve thousand dollars on this good for you um, he's like, I thought you were only making a couple grand. And I was like, well, no, I negotiated it pretty well. I was like, the sellers were pretty open to it from the beginning. I gave them the price that they wanted. Um, and he's like, okay, cool, fine. So we'll sign an agreement that states you get your 12,000 and we will pay the seller their 10,000 minus the $800 for the pump and situation. And it was like, all right, cool. We should all be good. So then title comes back in and they say, all right, now there's going to be extra charges because of the way that it's being switched to and we're still going to have this so instead of it being like a two thousand dollar closing cost it went to like almost a five thousand dollar closing cost and then the buyer was like well you know i'm not paying that that's more than i was expecting i was only thinking two to three thousand and it just turned into drama and i was like all right whatever let's like if you're not willing to move forward we can just void your side of the agreement and i will reimburse you for your water pump and I will just close on it myself. And he was like, well, I don't want to do that either. Like, I want to close on it. I just don't want to feel like I'm getting taken advantage of. I was like, well, I'm not taking advantage. That's the title company. It's your title company. You picked them. And that kind of got him to be like, okay, fine. I did pick this title company. This is what they said. And it was just fiasco, right? It was a fiasco. And he was like, but I did notice on the paperwork that uh, they want me to pay for the probate attorney. The seller's paying for the probate attorney, not me. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean they're paying for it? You said way back when you have a probate guy who will deal with the probate and he can get paid out of escrow and you were totally fine with covering it. And he's like, I never said that. I said I had a probate guy. I said he'd get paid out of escrow, but I didn't say I was paying for it. And I was like, dang it. Shame on me, because I should have got that put in writing. At that time, if you ever run across something like that where someone's agreeing to pay for something, you should probably get a contract, put it in writing, and have them say, hey, I am agreeing to pay for the probate attorney because we don't even know what that cost is. And I was like, all right, so we're gonna have to redo numbers at this point, because I was like, well, look, just fine. I'm not taking another penny away from the seller because we already took more money from them. 
for the water pump situation and all that. And then it turned out there was back taxes on the trailer that they weren't expecting that was going to come out of it. And I said, I will pay for the probate attorney then. Take it out of my $12,000. So it was only like two grand for the probate attorney. So I was like, look, let's just keep it at the seller gets their 10,000 minus the 800 bucks and then take the 2,000 off of my 12,000. So I'll take 10,000. And he was like, all right, fine. So we redid it to where my agreement was 10,000 to me, the 10,000 to the seller minus the 800. So there was too much moving parts here and it would just cause drama and you know, such is the life of a wholesale transaction. But at the very end, that's where it came to. We had to remove me from the situation. I had to contract seller and buyer directly and void me completely out of it, sign a referral fee agreement, send the referral fee agreement with the new agreements to title, and then they funded everything, I got paid. Seller was ecstatic about it getting closed out, and she's like, look, I hope I can see it once you guys are done with it, because that was my grandparents' house that then passed on to my dad, that then passed on to me. Um, and I just, I would love to see it back up and running and have a family in there. That's what this guy's gonna do. He's not gonna flip it, he's gonna rent it. Uh, to somebody and uh, yeah that's the situation so how did I how did I find the deal it was lead Zolo PPL how did I find the buyer it was reverse wholesaling via Zillow uh, I went to Zillow and found somebody who had bought a crappy property I skip traced the owner of that property called them and got them uh, under contract how do we find the title company the buyer wanted to use his title company uh, I'm not a big fan of that but that's what we did um, and uh, how much did I make off of it? It was a $25 lead that I turned into $10,000 uh, in an assignment fee. And uh, even after all was said and done, like literally the sellers have called me twice and they've asked for updates and they say, you know, you're like family now because you helped us through this whole situation. We were gonna just probably lose it to a tax auction or something at some point because we didn't know what to do with this thing. Um, and that's why people need wholesalers, right? They had no clue. They were never gonna get anything done with this property. They could have potentially lost it. And instead they were able to have somebody come in like me and help them through the situation, find a way to get it to um, back up into a productive property with a tenant in it instead of it being something where squatters are going to potentially move in so anyways hopefully that was a fun story for you guys if you don't see i am repping the uh let's see where is it at <laughs> sub two brands um today because i was talking about <clears throat> the other day with a guy that i was working a deal with and he was like man how did you get so good at this and you're doing creative deals and seller finance and taking over people's mortgages and doing cash wholesaling and you're doing land wholesaling and you're doing mobile homes and you're doing houses like that's a lot um you must have been doing this for decades and i was like well no not really just a couple years and he's like well how did you get so good and i said well surrounding yourself by the right people if you surround yourself by the right people who are doing the things that you want to do it gets a whole lot easier and uh so i joined the sub two community a couple years ago um, it is an expensive community. Uh, it's like eight or nine grand. I forget what it is right now if you want to join it. Um, I'll leave the link in the description in my link tree down there if you ever want to check it out. Um, but I would tell you, before I even joined Sub2, I had made over $10,000 in assignment fees prior to even joining from networking with other Sub2 members and doing JV agreements where I found the deal and they helped me through the process. And so I basically did deals to pay my way into joining. Um, and I would suggest anybody else who wants to join, do the same thing, try and work away. You can, you can join on a payment plan or all that. I joined all at once so I could put it on a credit card and then get cash back. Again, like in my link tree, there's how you could sign up for a credit card and get like 850 bucks back if you just sign up for the Chase card and you spend six grand or something in the first couple months. So you sign up for sub two, you put it on the credit card, you get your cash back, and you basically got like a thousand bucks off of joining the mentorship, pretty dang smart. Um, but anyways, I, I love the community. I would not be where I am today. I have closed well over $125,000 in assignment fees year to date uh, just from PPL. That's not counting my referral stuff. That's not counting the sub two deals that I've done, just PPL stuff, and so shout out uh, Pace Morby and the Sub2 brand. Shout out RJ Bates and the Titanium brand um, because they taught me more about the PPL side there and like closing 
negotiating virtual deals. Uh, I learned a lot more of my skills from the Sub2 community and like the live weekly Zooms that they do for Closers Cafe or the Daily Dial where they teach you how to call people. And uh, I would tell you, so if you're somebody who's new out there and you're looking for a community that's gonna help you get forward, uh, I'm not just saying this because I have an affiliate link and yes, there's an affiliate link and yes, I do get paid if you join, but I have made uh, well over $200,000 since I have joined. So my $8,000, $9,000, I forget what it is right now. Uh, I paid close to $8,000. I think it's up to like $9,000 now. Anyways, uh, investment has returned $200,000 to me. So would I say it's worth it? I would say it's worth it. Is it worth it to you? Depends. Are you gonna put in the work and the effort that it takes to get there? Are you going to be making the calls and not just hoping that leads and stuff come to you and sales come to you? You still gotta put in the work. So if you're gonna put in the work and uh, you wanna do it, I think you should do it. So anyways, I'm, I'm rambling now. Where am I at? 20 minutes into this video. Nobody's gonna watch it to this point. Thank you for watching if you did. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. Check the links in the description. And uh, hit me up on Instagram and say hi, at Dana Invests. Later.